My name is Natalie Restool. I come from Oki Kendot Anishinaabek, so I come from Dokis First Nation. I found a program that was firstly at Georgian College, but was with um, learning the native language, so Anishinaabemwin. And I took that program for about um, one year, and I knew that wasn't exactly what I wanted to do um, for my learning, so I went to Canada College and then I took the Indigenous Wellness and Addictions Prevention Program and that was a two-year um, diploma. And then I knew I wanted to stay on that path to help people so that's when I went to Nipissing University and I'm currently enrolled in my third year in psychology. And I'm also the um, Anishinaabek Youth um, representative for the Anishinaabek Nation so I've actually had the opportunity to travel to uh, the 42 communities that are within the Anishinaabek Nation so um, I've heard many stories of youth and elders and leadership about um, their passions and their um, relationship to traditional knowledge or the culture and how it strengthens their identity. I feel very lucky that uh, I was able to grow up with both my grandparents on both sides of my, my mom's side and my dad's side. So they are one of my biggest teachers in teaching me how to uh, use my hands and be crafty. And also my mom too, so I really picked up on that gift and I've, I've carried it out since I was, I'd say six years old to now I'm 24 years old. So I feel very lucky to have that gift that they passed on to me. So this is a Tikinagan, also uh, known as a cradle board. And when women uh, become pregnant with their child, it's almost like their role and responsibility to be able to create gifts for their baby when they come into this world. Uh, way back in the day when these were used, um, the parents, the moms would set their babies in here and they would prop them up against a tree and the babies would always observe. So that's why they say a lot of Indigenous people are very observant because it's almost in our DNA to be able and trained to learn that way. So once it came to that time when they would be able to walk, they would just take these babies out and they would just know how to walk just by observing. So um, it's pretty amazing stories that have been passed down through things like this. Thinking about my daughter, I was also reflecting, reflecting back on my life as a little girl and I put a lot of my, my stories in there and my teachings in there and when I think about my daughter, you know, I, I, I hope that I can um, give her those good lessons and I put those, that good medicine in there for her to be able to um, express herself in a way and grow uh, beautifully and be able to um, build strong relationships and never be scared to go out and seek that learning. So when I bead with florals and medicines on here, I really pray that they seek these things, even for my son's work. I put a lot of that medicine in there because when we go out to the land, you just feel good. You just feel good. And sometimes it's we get too caught up in the city life. And when we go outside, we feel good. So when I um, put these florals and these medicines in my work, I really hope that they feel that, that good energy in there as well. Every time I learn, I'm always excited to go back into community or in my family circle to be able to teach these things. And it, it comes full circle, right? So now I'm teaching my grandma new techniques and my mom new techniques. And they're like, geez, you should just make me these things when they already know how to make it. So it's just that, um, that that's that sense of love, right? And you're giving that back and you're almost thanking them, like, thank you for teaching me your ways. And okay, now I guess I'll make you something kind of so. It's, it's just that circle and just being thankful that they've given you that gift. So that's how I like to think of it.